motion to remove items H3 through H16 by unanimous consent. Second. Uh, for your gifts, um, I would like a resolution H7 um, be considered separately to recognize its importance and highlight to the public. Okay, so let's. I'm going to move items H3 through H16 by unanimous consent, except for H7. Oh, sorry, that's the right number. Yeah, H7. So all in favor of those those uh, moved, uh, items that I moved, except for H7. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, motion carries. Um, now I'd like to make a motion to move H7. I would like to offer it now. Uh, just specifically, each time it's been moved and seconded, so... So it's already moved and seconded, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, I would like to um, offer an amendment uh, to H7. Uh, foremost, um, I, I am, as I mentioned earlier, I'm very excited uh, to see you um, and uh, Linda Hughes, uh, my deputy director on this board, uh, leading our county. I would like to... Um, add that um, as someone who was raised by a mother, really a solo farmer, uh, really uh, actually plowed the fields herself, but, um, having me on the back and picking cotton, I, I am very uh, excited that we are taking this initiative, re-energize and expand this council to uh, bring in incredible women who can guide our county on issues that not just to affect the women, but affect everybody else. Um, on that note, I, I apologize, first of all, not knowing the procedure. Uh, I, I humbly apologize for that. Uh, I did not know that, um, first of all, that we had to, um, that candidates had to submit their resumes uh, and uh, be screened by the three voter director. Uh, these are the, the, women, um, the women on this council, these appointments are by the director uh, at her discretion. Um, but I, I would like to, I saw this on Monday, and I noticed that there were 20 seats, uh, but all 20 were already, uh, slots were nominated uh, for. So I don't want to nominate somebody right now and have someone compete against the 20 already nominated, or, or have to see a woman uh, get voted down. Uh, I think that, that nobody wants to be in that position like that. So I respectfully ask the board if you would amend uh, tonight uh, the um, resolution to increase the council size to 21. And uh, I apologize, but I would love to submit a resume uh, with a wonderful woman who exhibits the characters my mother had uh, to you, a resume um, after the meeting, hopefully tomorrow. And I would hope you would consider uh, the resume and uh, may perhaps add the woman at the next meeting to the next seat that will be opened up with the amend amendment tonight. Freeholder, you have to make a formal motion to okay. open that resolution. Thank you very much. So, uh, Director uh, Gibbs, I would uh, like to make a motion to amend the um, resolution so we can have the size of uh, 21 to accommodate a wonderful retired social worker uh, Harriet Coyne from Montmorel, whose resume I will present to you for consideration at your sole discretion um, at the, the between our meetings and for consideration at the next meeting. Just for clarification, purposes, there wouldn't be a nomination. These, these are director's appointments. Oh, yes, so yes, yes. <laughs> only asking for the size to send your motion one so I can accommodate the other one. Yes. Just if I could state it for the thank you for the work. I think the motion would be to amend resolution H7 to increase the membership on the Women's Advisory Council from 20 to 21. Is that your motion? Yes, sir. How many with this? Thank you. I'll second it. Okay, this is a roll call vote. Freeholder Hughes. I'll say. Freeholder Pullian. Yes. Freeholder Sang. Uh, yes. Freeholder Tiger. I'm saying. Director Gibbs. I'm going to abstain. And I'd like just to address uh, the residents in the room, and particularly the women. I want to explain why I'm abstaining. Freeholder Hughes and I have been working diligently on addressing 
some of the outdated um, aspects of this council to make sure that we can reinvigorate and expand it to make sure that we're adequately addressing the needs of women in this community. And my extension is not about the 21st person as an individual, who they are, or their qualifications. This is the first time I'm hearing their name. This woman, I'm sure, is very qualified, and I would love to see her resume and see where what uh, what openings there are and where we can you know, fit her in if they're if, if appropriate on one of our many advisory boards and committees and councils that this county has. But I am I am very disappointed that this the, the process that you did the, the way that you went about and conducted yourself today. You said that you're about political gamesmanship, but you brought this to my attention an hour ago, um, and, and are attempting to undo months of work from Greenwater Hughes and I. And this council is something that we've been working on, as I said, very diligently, something that's very important to us. When you were sworn in, we provided you with a list of every board and committee, their members, and their term dates. You would have seen that every person on the Women's Advisory Council had had a term that expired and that they are appointed by the director. You could have submitted a resume for my consideration, which I would have happily reviewed. You could have called me any time between January and today. And you could have called me this morning instead of texting me and sending a text that wasn't very clear. As I would say to any of the three holders, please send me resumes for consideration for this board or any others, and I'd be happy to lend my support to them for a committee uh, but tonight, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm upset by the process, so I just wanted to explain my extension. And I want to move on with the rest of the meeting, because this is going to be a really happy, great, exciting meeting, and some really great things that are happening. Three older views? Um, yes or no one? Three older. Three older. Three older. You're out of order, three older. I don't run the meeting. I just provide you. I would like to explain your positions. You're out of order. You're out of order. You are out of order, sir. Sir, you are out of order. Director. You have you have, asked, you are out of order and we need to take a vote. You have We're going to vote on H7. We are going to vote on H7. For, purpose, for purposes of clarity, the motion to amend H7 has failed because abstentions have the effect of no votes. So H7 has been uh, moved and seconded as written. So we do have to vote on H7. H7 by itself. I will make it in the public comment. All in favor? Uh, let's, let's do roll call. Yes, let's do a roll call. Freeholder Hughes? Yes. Freeholder Pullian? No. Freeholder Singh? No. Freeholder Tiger? Yes. Director Gibbs? Yes. Freeholder Hughes? Thank you, Director. I'd like to make a motion to move items H17 through H19. <coughs> CBC, and she happens to be my student, <laughs> and she's our uh, outreach uh, coordinator for student government at RCBC. I'm very excited to see a young face right running the council. Um, so, and I thank you for uh, accepting this opportunity. I'm glad to. I will hear a lot about it in my class. Honestly. Thank you very much for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, the other, um, I, I, I. I was very disappointed. Um, I, I tried to be very respectful, very nicely, recognizing that I am in a minority, literally a minority in a minority, and we don't have a majority as a Democrat. I respectfully recognized the director's position and only asked for the council to be expanded by one seat to accommodate a nominee, a name for consideration by the director. I understand it's the sole discretion of the director and to consider or reject, you know, after consideration. Um, I'm just very heartbroken that it was turned into a political game with accusations and not being able to respond to those accusations hurled at me. I, someone who entered a political position first time, it's three months starting now, 
I, I am learning firsthand what it means to be in a minority on a political board, uh, the games that are played. Um, there are a couple of things that were said, and I'd like to clear the record. Foremost, um, I did not know that you had to uh, go through this process of um, whether the process is going to start today. Uh, on the record, I'll tell you, when I learned about this, you guys probably learned about it before, and I'm one of the elected officials. I learned about it Monday, that there was going to be a change from 15 to 20, and I saw the list that was already filled with 20 names on it. And who am I to just nominate somebody else, knowing for somebody else to be on this council, somebody else has to be taken off because there are only 20 spots. So today, while I was preparing for the meeting, I sent a message to the director and it read the following. I'd like to nominate a woman for the council, but you have 20 on the list already. Sad face. Which clearly says, hey, you already have a council full, uh, but I want to nominate somebody. Um, I got a nice response. Please send her a resume so we can keep her in mind for future openings. Uh, there will also be many opportunities for support in, uh, in the council this year if she's interested. Um, so when I came in today, I, I thought about it and I said, well, you know, what if we were to consider, and this is in the meeting beforehand, and I asked, what if you were to expand it by one C, what does it take? All it takes is a one word in the resolution, say, hey, let's amend it from 21, and then that would make it, Ill, for me, that would open up door for, to uh, offer a resume for consideration. I did not know that there was a resume that had to be submitted. I hope, I'm assuming all of the women here could, uh, submitted a resume and you were screened. I was not aware of that process as uh, I am a little bit new to this position. Um, but I heard it. So in consideration of that, I respectfully asked the amendment so we can have 21 seats so you could consider another name. Right now you can't consider another name even if I was to hand in the resume because there are only 20 spots. And who would it be to, you know, who wants to be taken off from a board? But the way it was portrayed and the way the acquisitions were, um, I, I heard from the very first day that this was going to be a board that was going to be bipartisanship. And I have yet to see anything more than political talking points and campaign slogans an action where something is actually bipartisanship. At no point we are at even a courtesy, I'm not, uh, of considering anything for the agenda. We're being shoved at it and then the card is being played, well you gotta know the rules. I, I represent the people of this county and forgive me if I have not read the rule book of this board. I am only a human, a full-time teacher, not a politician, that goes around and this studies. This is my first time an elected official as well. I'm not a career politician, full time politician. Yes, you do have experience, and I commend you for that. I do not have the experience, so forgive me for not having the experience uh, and, and to go through this. Um, but that's, that's just, you know, it's just tiresome. Uh, it, all you ask is simple requests and to be shouted down like that, accused of things in public. Um, by a respected position, it's very disheartening. Um, I commend the woman uh, on this council. I hope the council's uh, position is not being used in a campaign season for political purposes. I, 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 know, I, I know in my heart it will not be the purpose of it, and I sure hope uh, that won't be, it won't be turned that way. Uh, this, this is a great work we have to do. Um, someone uh, who has a great woman, a strong woman in my personal life, this is something I feel very strong about, so that's why I have, I have put forth one name to be considered. Um, and only to considered, but um, obviously that did not go that way. Um, you know, I, I wish I could uh, change my vote, um, but I, I don't know the rules of the board. If I could, I would have, I would do, a, you know, want to recognize a woman on this council. Um, the other thing I do want to point out is there's one um, resolution that we passed. Um, uh, H5 that uh, puts in increases for some of the non-represented uh, staff of county employees, uh, the prosecutors, agents, victim employees, and confidential legal secretaries. So this is what I talk about putting the 
things in action, supporting women, and so on. So in this uh, contract that we're approving, there's a subgroup that is made up completely of women, which is the lowest paid group in this unit. Um, when I heard it the first time, I raised my concerns right away. All the other groups in that contract getting a solid fixed increase, a dollar amount, plus a percentage, except for the one group there, who are the lowest paid employees, all women in that group. So when I say, you know, we need to do more than just words, I actually mean it. I don't say I support women for political reasons. I support women because that's in my blood. And I hope going forward, and I made it clear in my comments at that time, that if we ever considering getting raises that is done all across, and not just for the other groups where you have majority of men and one subgroup where you have majority of women. Actually, the majority of women in that other group you're talking about, so you should get your facts straight first. Prosecutor, I'm correct on that, right? Yes, you are. Um, so with this group that uh, was in that agenda item, there were two other groups of people that were approved for raises. Eleven of the 19 in those two groups were women. They and what was the increase they received? They got $3,000 each. And in the group of five people that you uh, discussed, one of them, by the way, is a man. Another one was already addressed with an increase that was $5,000. And there are three other women in that group who are essentially clerical employees, but not in the bargaining unit. To take care of these women while the CWA contract was being considered, we asked and you graciously today approved that they be decoupled from CWA since they're not represented in that bargaining unit and be given their increases sooner than the CWA contract would be resolved and approved so that they can get their money sooner. That's the three other people in that group. And those three, we basically track to the CWA contract. When that gets approved, we'll consider them. We also have the flexibility with them, since they're not in civil service, to consider them for other positions within the office where they may be able to earn more money. So, uh, Freeholder Singh, respectfully, I ask that you not use my office as any type of political football. I also will add that I've had two unit supervisor promotions since I became prosecutor a year ago, both of them women. I've hired five detectives since I've been prosecutor, three of them women. I've hired five AP since I've been prosecutor, two of them women. So I don't think you have any truck with my office or my uh, leadership of that office as far as how we treat them. And your assumption that one group was men and the clerical were women shows that you're not as evolved as you're claiming to be. I'm sorry, but was I not informed at the meeting when I asked at the last week when this contract was up? Was I not informed that the women in the bottom group were all, that it was all women? I would like that for the record to be clear. So you stated that. When, when the Mr. Did not Cook say that. You said that. presented that, I specifically asked uh, if that was all women. <coughs> Sir, I wasn't at the meeting, but um, I, I would like those uh, for the record. I would like that there that when I asked, I was. I don't like to be in a position where I'm embarrassed. I did ask, and I was informed, yes, all those were women. Well, again, I wasn't at the meeting. I, I, would, I didn't feel the right. question. However, when you're talking about how our office is treating women in our workplace, you should know and you should recognize that 11 of the 19 people getting substantial raises are women. And that the promotions that I've made, I've only made two unit supervisor promotions since I've been in office, both of them are women. So take that into account as well before you throw any bombs at my office and how we're treating women. I'm not a part of any political game here, but I will defend our office very vigorously. I apologize, but I only brought it up because I was told that it was all women in that group. So I do apologize. This is not something I wholeheartedly believe in treating women in, in a 
So you're yes, saying that our assistant prosecutor be. is lying. And assistant prosecutor was not there. Evan Crook was he's there. The, he's the prosecutor and it was our assistant prosecutor. Evan Crook Mr. Arnold was, was there. there who he's answered my question, who negotiated the contract. Please stop putting other people in it, say like somehow I'm talking to them. Prosecutor, I meant no disrespect. This was about money for employees. This is not about your office. This is about a negotiated contract. This is something that I think as a freeholders, we control the money, and I want to make sure the money went to the employees who deserve it. But try to turn this into a political gamemanship where I'm being say, oh, you're attacking the prosecutor, or you're attacking a woman. You're saying, this I'm is talking, exactly you what I hate and you, people hear about politics. Are, you are out of order. I've let you go on and on. You talk over me all the time. You cut me off. And I'm, I'm just about, tonight was supposed to be special, supposed to be happy. So I'm just about done. I'm going to call for a motion for adjournment, please. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye.